sometime in the future on a planet very like yours. As the horizon darkened, rising stars swarmed to distant galaxies and gathered like bright white moths around the moon. The old tree shivered in the cold, rattling a skeleton's hand towards the one yellow planet amongst them, a planet that had died. The old man sighed and shook his head. So many stars, yet each so much alone. Get it wrong, and there's no one to put it right. The boy looked puzzled. Is that what happened up there? But why? The old grandfather rested his hand upon the boy's shoulder. I'll tell you how, then you can tell me why, okay? And the boy said, okay. And with that, he began. In the beginning, the world was all ocean. Storms raged in choking gas above the waves, which spat and writhed where lightning stabbed, and where winds stripped their very flesh. Beneath the waters, great plates of rock parted. The freed fountains of lava caught and quenched, leaving charred fingers to point and hiss at the sulfurous sky. Elsewhere, colliding plates of rock buckled and rose to form the continents. But it was too hot for life on land. The planet's core glowed bright from below and the sun from above, and a dense blanket of gases wrapped the world and trapped all the heat within. But then the smallest of creatures appeared in the sea, using the planet's heat and gases to grow. And when they died, their bodies settled among the sediments of the sea, crushed to become oil. And so all the energy and gases the creatures had used to grow were trapped. And so the earth cooled. And as the earth cooled, plants began to appear. And they too used the planet's heat and gases to grow. And when they died, they lay beneath the swamps and soil and were crushed to form coal. And so the earth cooled yet more. And as the earth cooled further, animals began to appear. And the animals and plants grew in number and variety until the planet was alive with trees and flowers and fish and snakes and apes and birds and beetles and ultimately man. <laughs> so far, so good. By now, a balance had been reached. The plants used the gases from the air to grow and release them again and they died. They trapped the heat of the sun, and what was left could escape through the clean, light air. Ice formed at the tips of the planet, and the sea levels fell. And so the planet stayed, not too wet and not too dry, not too hot and not too cold, the air not too thick and not too thin, and the plants and animals not too many and not too few. But all this time, the heat and gases of a million years were not gone, but corked beneath the rocks as oil and coal. A genie in a bottle, just waiting to escape. A dangerous genie to release then, said the boy. A very dangerous genie indeed, said the old man. The boy looked up once more at the yellowed planet above. So what went wrong? he asked. Well, at first, man used only his own energy to survive and lived in balance with his world. His crops were harvested by hand, his mills driven by water, and his ships by wind. And he only made what he needed. But then, he wanted more. So he dug iron from the ground, burned coal to smelt and forge it, and from it built machines and goods and the trains and boats to deliver them. And his machines and trains and boats in their turn also burnt coal for fuel. And what about the heat and gases trapped in that coal for those millions of years? Released in the blink of an eye, said the old man. And the world began to heat up again. And. And man got worried? And man didn't even notice, said the old man. Oh dear, said the boy. 
Then man burnt coal to make electricity which powered the lights and appliances in every house and the machines in every factory which made them. And the more electricity that was used, the more coal was burned and more heat and gases were released. And the gases began to blanket the world once more, trapping the heat within. So what did man do then? asked the boy. He started burning oil as well, said the old man. Oh dear, said the boy. He turned ores into metals and oil into plastics, and his machines made a wealth of things which, until then, nobody had ever thought they needed. And this manufacturing used more electricity, and man burnt oil as well as coal to make it. And the energy and gas trapped in the oil for all those millions of years, asked the boy, was released with the hum of the turbine, said the old man and the air got thicker and trapped even more heat beneath it and the planet got hotter. So man recognized this and made less, asked the boy. So man ignored this and made even more, replied the old man. Oh dear, said the boy. And now man's numbers increased and he needed more space in which to live so he chopped down the forests. So now there were fewer plants absorbing the gases and the planet got hotter still. So man stopped clearing the forest, asked the boy. So man chopped down even more trees and used the wood to make more things and the machines which made them used even more oil and coal. Oh dear, said the boy. And the more man made and used, the more rubbish and waste he created but he didn't know what to do with it. So he dug vast holes to bury it in, until at last he ran out of holes. And then he stopped making rubbish, asked the boy. And then he set fire to it, said the old man. Oh dear, said the boy. To carry his goods and waste, man turned oil into petrol and made an engine to burn it. And this engine powered his vans and lorries but also his cars, and everyone wanted a car, so everyone bought a car, and the roads became choked with vehicles and the air choked with their gases. The old became sicker, the atmosphere thicker, and children more breathless, and the planet warmed up even more. So man built fewer cars, asked the boy. So man built more roads, said the old man. And when the roads were full, he built aeroplanes. Oh, here, said the boy. And the more aeroplanes there were, the more people flew. And the more people flew, the cheaper it got. And the cheaper it got, the more people flew. And sometimes it was cheaper to fly food around the world than to grow it nearby. But the fuel for the planes came from oil and the heat and gases of a million years were released as the jet engines roared. And the atmosphere thickened even faster, trapping more and more heat around the planet. And the temperature began to rise fast. And scientists noticed. And they warned the companies and the politicians. So the companies and politicians did something about it, asked the boy. So the companies and politicians denied or ignored it said the old man. Oh dear, said the boy. And everyone wanted more and more, and the companies wanted to sell more and more, so they made more and more. So they drilled deeper for oil and dug deeper for coal and burnt more and more of both, so the gases of more millions of years were released and the planet grew hotter, faster than ever before. And at last, the people got to hear about it. And so the people stopped driving and flying and buying, asked the boy. So the people talked about it, said the old man. Oh dear, said the boy. The people watched programs about it on their television and read about it in their newspapers. And they called it global warming, because this sounded comfortable and less frightening and made it sound like everyone else's problem, but not theirs. And as they drove their cars and switched on their heating and lights and gadgets and computers, they all agreed that global warming was a bad thing. 
So they stopped using fuel, asked the boy. So they rushed to see the melting ice caps and the last of the coral reefs and rainforests before they disappeared. And the cars and ships and trains and planes in which they traveled burnt yet more oil. Oh dear, said the boy. But then, like a kettle coming to the boil, the atmosphere started to swirl and bubble. It became unstable, unpredictable. There were storms one year and droughts the next, and the hot days were hotter than ever before, while the rain for a month fell in a day. Crops began to fail and rivers flooded. Whole cities were submerged. So now people stopped driving and flying and buying, asked the boy. So now people blame the politicians, said the old man. And the politicians did something? And the politicians talked about it too. Oh dear, said the boy. The politicians called it climate change, which sounded nicer and nobody's fault. They held meetings to which they flew food and fine wine. And the politicians and their wives and their husbands and advisors and translators and administrators and secretaries drove in their limousines to eat the good food and drink the fine wine. And when they'd finished, they all agreed that climate change was a very bad thing indeed, but that the food was terrific. And then they did something about it, asked the boy. And then they arranged to meet again and went home. Oh dear, said the boy. And now the air and sea currents changed such that some areas got very hot and other areas strangely colder. And the people said something must be done. So they used more but recycled their rubbish. They drove more but in more efficient cars. They used air conditioning where it was hot and heaters where it was cold. All of which used even more energy and made things worse. So the people said they should use less energy, asked the boy. So people said that someone else should use less energy, said the old man. Oh dear, said the boy. So the politicians said something must be done. They'd burn more oil, but not quite so much more. They'd make some energy in a different way. So they tried to build windmills, but the people said they were ugly and noisy. They tried to build nuclear power stations, but people were scared of them. So the scientists said, something should be done, asked the boy. So the scientists said, but nothing could be done. It was too late, said the old man. Oh dear, said the boy. So time ran fast in reverse. The ice caps melted and reflected less heat. The sea levels rose and the warming got faster. Crops failed and countries sank. And wars were fought for what was left and against the millions of refugees. And plants died. And the animals which lived on them. And the animals which ate those animals. And soon there was no life left at all. It had taken millions of years for the heat and gas to be locked in coal and oil, for the planet to cool, for the ice caps to form, for the wealth of animals and plants to appear. But it took only a few hundred years for man to undo all that, to release all the gas and heat it had taken those millions of years to bottle away. To release the genie from the bottle, said the boy. The old man turned to him. So, now you know. Each country and every man and woman ignored their responsibility, protesting that it was everyone's problem but their own. He looked up at the yellow planet above, and that was how the planet was destroyed. Now you must tell me why. They turned and made their way back towards the cottage. Inside, the boy snuggled deep into his mattress. Then, as the old man crossed the room to leave, the boy called out, Grandad. The old man stopped, his fingers upon the door handle. And the boy said, Greed! Greed! That's why they did it. 
and the old man didn't reply but looked out through the bedroom window. And outside, the flowers and flies and birds and beasts of the forest were waiting for the morning sun on an earth protected by its people. Above hung that one yellow planet, cloaked in its blanket of thick, poisoned air, its life long since lost among the bones of greedy men. The old man smiled and nodded and closed the door behind him. What planet do you want to live on? You still have a choice.